did, did anyone want to add any other points to that? I don't know. things get lost, they get lost in translation, they get lost from generation to generation, and, and, and for it to be that crucial and to be that important to them, even back then, I mean, for us, uh, we come to uh, Deuteronomy 31, 9 to, 9, to, 9 to 13, and it asks, what did the Lord tell them there, and what lessons can we take from that for ourselves? So that brings us to today, and so let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 31, 19 to 13. So, so with that, uh, uh, it reads, what did the Lord tell them there? And what lessons can we take from that for ourselves? And, you know, bringing it today, up today, uh, if, 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 if they didn't receive it, uh, and if it wasn't important to them back then, uh, how, how are we supposed to feel about it today? And, and I just think so much get lost uh, from generation to generation uh, because we don't share things with our children. Uh, we don't, but it, it's, it's like our life stories, what has happened to us, uh, it would really make a difference in our children's life, like when they're at that point and they're dealing with the same stuff. Uh, and, and so, so with this, with this being, being done back then, uh, to, 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 to even receive it like they received it, I mean, the people wanted to know, the people wanted to learn, they, they, they were open to receive. And, and, and I think it would have been uh, a disaster if it would have went the other way. And it goes back to uh, uh, Israel uh, being in, in the wilderness for all of those years. And the one that was disobedient, uh, all of them had died out. And so uh, with the ones now that we have right now, they had a heart for God. And they had a heart for God. They wanted to hear from God. They wanted to know what God had to say. And for the man of God to be... Uh, have the heart of God also, uh, it is, I think it was an awesome thing back then. You see, uh, back on what you said, when they were in the wilderness for 40 years, and then when they come out, they had to marry with other people, you know, other than who they, you know, marry with other people. And so by this reading, they demand, you know, they wanted to be, they wanted this reading to be read because they have now built the wall, they see what the Lord is doing about. The wall is built, and now it's not, it's time for a new beginning. Mm -hmm. So it said that they uh, listened to it and they read it from the morning to like midday. Mm -hmm. And so and they stood in reverence and they listened to every word that was said. 
to the point that it touched us up there. They were crying as we go on. But to the story you see, mm -hmm. that uh, he told them no grief because this was the day of celebration, mm -hmm. which leads into the, the feast. And, 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 and it's the people waiting for instruction, uh, uh, just to be ready uh, and to want to hear from God. Go ahead. I just want to say that. Um, I'm going to ask you to stand because we really can't hear you from way back there. So it says the answer to the question that you asked is that what should we take from this text? It's found clearly in verse 12, where it says, Hear this book of instruction. The book of instruction, again, this, this, this is the law of Moses. This is what, what the instructions that God has given Moses. There's 600, 600 instructions. There's 600 instructions in that, in that book, in that covenant. There's the Ten Commandments. There's these 600, these 600, 600 ordinances that are in this book. 300 which are positive, 300 which are negative, mm -hmm. and then there's instructions on about on how to worship and what the scripture means. So it says, hear this book of instruction. Learn to fear the Lord your God. That's the second thing. And the third is carefully obey all the terms mm -hmm. of this covenant, of this instruction. Right. And you know, today, today, uh, uh, with the with the 600 laws and rules and ordinances of Moses, uh, today. Uh, I think that that goes to legalism. And we want to have everything done legally, and our heart isn't even right with God. Uh, but to have your heart right with God and want to, want to uh, receive and want to be open to receive, uh, that's, 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 that's something only God can do. Uh, Sister Reed, you look like you want to say something? No, no, no. I was listening, listening to what you were saying. Oh, okay. Okay, now, now at the bottom of, of, of Sunday, it says, a literal reading of Nehemiah 81 says that they gathered together as one man. What does that tell us about the importance of unity among the body of believers? Uh, Hebrews 10.25 tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And we think that we're doing God a favor when we come together. Uh, we, we, we're really doing ourselves a disservice because we're not in alignment to receive what God has for us. So we're going to go to Monday, and Monday uh, is the reading and hearing the law. And uh, Nehemiah 8.3, Deuteronomy 4, 1, uh, and we're not going to read all of those texts. Uh, but the question is, what do these verses teach us about how we are to interact with the word of God? And so for me, I said that we are to stand on the word, the promises of God, for he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And that goes back to... Back to uh, uh, what Julia said, uh, our heart, our heart has to be open for us to even hear God. And I, and I have, um, uh, that we should um, uh, listen or, or, or be, pay, 
be very attentive to, to the world. The text put this in, in, in Nehemiah 8, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wrong, third verse. He placed the square just inside the water gate <clears throat> from early morning until noon and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. So it asked how should we pay attention to the Very attentive. Very attentive mm -hmm. to the word of God. So that's pretty mm -hmm. much the same. Right. Yeah. And we come down to Monday at the bottom. It says, how do, you, how do you relate to the word of God? That is, even though you claim to believe it, how is that claim made manifest in your life in the sense of how you seek to obey what it teaches? How differently would you live if you didn't obey the Bible? And I'm going to call on somebody for that one. <laughs> Brother Trice. Uh, I would say that Jeremiah in his situation shows me pretty much what I'm not doing mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Uh, I was very impressed with the fact of how long he prayed uh, before entering into the situations mm -hmm. that he had to deal with, with the people. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting to me that, you know, we keep hearing, you know, having the heart of God, but it was Nehemiah who had the heart mm -hmm. and everybody else you know, wasn't doing what he was doing. They weren't studying, they weren't praying, mm -hmm. and they simply just came together for the hearing of the word. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on and we keep reading, you know, it, it was applicable in certain situations, like as in the building of the wall. And I give the Spirit the credit for that, mm -hmm. uh, the Holy Spirit uh, the credit for that, even though it wasn't distributed the way it is today. Mm -hmm. But What's interesting to me is it always points out the situations and the scenarios of Nehemiah and then the people mm -hmm. and then the situation in its entirety. And so it makes me just want to just pay attention, mm -hmm. but pay attention, be more attentive to where I'm not being applicable with the word, mm -hmm. you know, because studying is the, easy, is the easy part. Got to get a lot more prayer going in, mm -hmm. uh, from the example of what Nehemiah showed. But it's always interesting to me the reaction of the people. Mm -hmm. Knowing the situation, knowing who God is, and yet still dealing with their own situation you know, in its entirety. So for me personally, it just says that I need to be more applicable. And what about unity and being on one accord? Now that there, man, I see us struggling with the unity to a certain extent. To a certain extent, I say that. And that's because of the fact of how I look at being obedient when it comes to instructions. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's just the easiest way for me to put it. You know, mm -hmm. I look at situations where everything is achievable if you follow the instructions correctly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that, and that deals with obedience mm -hmm. and discipline. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and really self-sacrificing. Mm -hmm. Because if we're able to put our own emotions to the side, mm -hmm and deal with this situation from a logical standpoint mm -hmm. and then moving forward. Because I know we deal with our feelings a lot today. You know, everything is about how we feel today. And That's we also deal with what we think is truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, 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 so with you operating out of what you think is truth mm -hmm. and me operating out of what I think is true, how are we going to come to an agreement? The yeah. word says, how can two walk unless they uh, agree? Mm -hmm. And so, so, so that common denominator you and I, we can't do it in ourselves. Uh, right. The Spirit of God has to be that. Uh, there. The Spirit of God has to be leading us, guiding us, uh, 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 setting the stage. Mm -hmm. God has to be in it all. And a lot of prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do what you, you wait, just wait, wait. said. I was just telling oh, my husband right. the same this morning. But, you know, I feel, I feel that way. But I, I want to learn this so bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I really want to learn it. Mm -hmm. apply it to my life. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of what you said is kind of what I was trying to explain to you this morning. Yeah. You said two texts. I had two texts and two things. Mm -hmm. First of all, the question is just how different would you live if you didn't know there's a Bible? Sometimes maybe I completely ignorant to the Bible. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can not see the Bible in that life whatsoever. Mm -hmm. That's because of the simple nature of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But the issue of unity is addressed in, in, 
scripture, and, and I have two. One is John 17, 20 to 26, and the other is 1 Corinthians 12, 27, where it speaks directly about unity. And it says unity is absolutely essential because the church is the body of Christ. We, we discussed that. And a body cannot be in disunity or disharmony with itself. If disunity occurs, it essentially ceases to be a body and becomes a disjointed group of individuals. And not only does that apply to the church, it applies to the home. So we see here without unity, we can't really call ourselves, we can't really call ourselves a church. We're a bunch of individuals who come to a place, but in terms of us functioning like a church, we can't function. Julia, and then, uh, do you have something to say also? No, I have oh, okay. Uh, Julia. Uh, my first comment was, well, brother, the brother just said uh, what the first part about the Bible. If you weren't living, if you weren't obeying the Bible, how would we live? And I, I was going to say, basically what you just said, it wouldn't be really living because, you know, the, the Bible is God speaking to us mm -hmm. in how to conduct our lives. So you might think that we're living mm -hmm. if we're not obeying it, but it really will like living mm -hmm. dead. And, and, and the, that was a thought in my mind. The thought in my mind, the next question I was going to ask is, is, is you was dead. I mean, each and every last one of us was dead until we came into the knowledge of God. And so, so, so uh, uh, you are walking dead until you know. And then, and, and then when you come into the knowledge of the know, you don't know, you have to be taught. Uh, and a lot of people are self-taught instead of being led by the Spirit of God, and that's where the chaos and the confusion and you doing your thing over there and me doing my thing over here, that's where all of that originates. And Tim, you uh, And the other comment was about the unity, you know, when, when the Bible says that we are a body, Sometimes I know I have been in the habit of we know we wait for God's audible voice or the Holy Spirit speaking. But and he does do that. I mean, even throughout the Bible with his leaders and prophets and things like that, that's an awful time. However, he also has given us, he says, put on the eye set. So as far as coming together in unity, so that we can see eye to eye. That's why he gave us all these publications through the Spirit of God. So that when we study it together to see exactly what he means in here, it breaks it down for us. All the instruction and correct instruction and righteousness, correction and all of that. And when we're all studying his interpretation the way that he intended it, then we will come together and see eye to eye. It won't be our approach, you know, that you're sitting over there getting up from Sabbath school class and saying, okay, that wasn't really answered, but it is, uh, you know, and, and people giving their opinion. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at, when we put that eye cell on and realize what he's saying to us as a family, mm -hmm. as a church body, not just a disconnected or a separate body of individuals, then we will get to, we will be not just seeing eye to eye, but we will get to live and be, and get rid of those, my old habits, my opinions, mm -hmm. what I feel, my ideas, and what I think, but will come closer to, as I say, the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's so much peaceful that way that I say, oh, I just don't get to see you. And then when, when we do that, Tell you, you, you look like you were about to say something else. Oh, yeah, I was, to answer the question, how different would you live getting obeyed? Uh, I'm just going to go back to early in my life when it wasn't just I wasn't obeying, I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. But during this time period, I felt directionless. 
I felt like, uh, I mean, I, I, it was like I wanted to know the meaning of life, but I didn't know where the answer was. Mm -hmm. And I was wanting to, and it, I guess that kind of got me to wanting to look at the scripture mm -hmm. to find uh, that direction. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I was having a hard time in the beginning, though, you know, just trying to find some direction. So basically, to answer the question, if I didn't obey, I'd feel lost. And, and uh, uh, go ahead, Sister. I was just thinking, uh, I think that listening to everyone, I see how important it is of unity because the unity is that strength. And when we're all together in one place and we're in the same thing, we didn't know uh, what our instructions are, the verses, and all of that. We know what they, what they all are. The verses that we, you know, if we're not together, we scattered or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we're not coming together, then we probably will feel lost. Don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And then two scriptures came to mind. One was Psalms 1, it said, Blessed is the man who walked at night in the council of the ungodly. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is, The law of the Lord is perfect, convert his soul. So the one with them two verses, you know, it gives us an instruction of God to how we are, you know, mm -hmm. walking. Anybody had any other comments? Yeah, I'm going to say that uh, unison is the uh, achievement mm -hmm. of the goal. I mean, you can't achieve anything without being in unison mm -hmm. with the instructions of which are given. Mm -hmm. So it just makes me realize more and more how important it is to be in line with the Word of God because it's the very instructions of God. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, we, we're moving to Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I, I, uh, I have to have the Word. I study the Word every day. Uh, every day is me and God, every day. And, and my scripture reading for today was Union with Christ. And the scripture text uh, read, uh, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to, uh, to fulfill the lust thereof. And it's not odd, nor is it strange that we're talking this week on the word. Uh, this, 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 this commentary reads, to effect the salvation of men, God employs various agencies. He speaks to them by his word and by his ministers. And he sends by the Holy Spirit messages of warning, reproof, and instruction. These means are designed to enlighten the understanding of the people, to reveal to them their duty and their sins and the blessings which they may receive, to awaken in them a sense of spiritual want, that they may go to Christ and find in him the grace they need. Every individual by his own act either puts Christ from him by refusing to cherish his spirit and follow his example, or he enters into a personal union with Christ by self-enunciation, faith, and obedience. We must each for himself choose Christ because he has first chosen us. This union with Christ is to be formed by those who are naturally at enmity with him. It is a relation of utter dependence to be entered into by a proud heart. This is close work, and many who profess to be followers of Christ know nothing of it. They normally accept the Savior, but not as the sole ruler of their hearts. To renounce their own will, perhaps, their chosen objects of affection or pursuit requires an effort at which many hesitate and falter and turn back. Yet this battle must be fought by every heart that is truly converted. We must war against temptations without and within. We must gain the victory over self, crucify the affections and lusts, and then begin the union of the soul with Christ. After this union is formed, it can be preserved only by continual, earnest, painstaking effort. Christ exercises his power to preserve and guard this sacred tie in the dependent, helpless sinner must act his part with untiring energy, or Satan by his cruel, cunning power will separate him from Christ. Your birth, your reputation, your wealth, your talents, your virtues, your piety, your philanthropy will not form a bond of union between your soul and Christ. Your connection with the church will be of no avail unless you believe in Christ. It is not enough to believe about him. You must believe in him. You must rely wholly upon his saving grace. And that takes us to Tuesday. And Tuesday is reading and interpreting the word. And this is uh, uh, Nehemiah 8, uh, 4 to 8. How was the reading of the law done? And you guys, uh, I don't want to go text by text, but, but, but just think about not having instructions. You don't have any instructions, and then somebody show up, and they give you the instructions, and you receive those instructions with gladness. Uh, that's like when, 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 um, when, when they learned that, 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 that Israel they build, uh, they build booth. And they have all of these different feasts and all of these uh, uh, different Sabbaths that they have that we don't do these Sabbaths today, but, but, but for them to sit down and hear 
of, 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 of what was done, how it was done, and what brought them to where they were right then. Uh, the question reads, how was the reading of the law done? And we're going to go to Nehemiah 8, uh, verses 4 to 8. Can I have a reader? Sure. Uh, Ezra, the scribe, stood at a wooden podium, which they had made for the, for the purpose. And beside him stood Metathiah, uh, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, uh, Hekiah, and Messiah, on the right hand, and the Perdia, Michelle, Mashiah, Hashem, Azabaniah, Zechariah, and Sheshelian on his left, on his left hand. So the question here is, we're oh, we reading 4 to 8. Oh, 4 to 2. Starting at 4 and reading 8. Uh -huh. Okay, let me go. Uh, And, uh, and it says, And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And these are all the names that they spoke of earlier. Uh, it, uh, I think it was split in 13 and 13. Uh, and, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Uh, but the key thing going on here is what? The order. The order, the reverence, the respect, the way it was done. All of that is crucial. Yeah. All of that is crucial. They read the book of the law of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read, helping the people to understand this passage. The question becomes, why did they understand what was being read? They didn't understand what was being read because when God gave Moses the law of Moses, what language did he give it to him then? He gave it to him in Hebrew. They've been in Babylon, they come back from Babylon, now they're here in Jerusalem again. What language are they speaking now? Aramaic. You're speaking Aramaic. Yeah. So you have to have somebody's hand teach you, tell you what you need somebody to interpret for you because the yeah. Jews, the Jews, because they were so unfaithful and because they were so sinful, mm -hmm. what happened? A whole race of people, the Samaritans, was created, but they forgot how to speak their language. Yeah. They forgot how to speak Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Okay? When Christ was here, what language did Christ speak to the man? He spoke to them in Aramaic. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand him. So that's why it's so important that they have interpreters there, because the, the law was given in one language, and now they speak a completely different language. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you need somebody there to explain. Well, well so, so let's go to the book of Acts uh, on the day of Pentecost, when, when, when Club and Tongues uh, uh, was on their shoulders, and everybody spoke, and everybody heard in their own language. Uh, and so with that being said, God is going to send you an interpreter, because that's God. He's not going to have his people ignorant, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, what happened here that parallels what was happening in Jerusalem in the text above? And this is uh, Acts 8, 26 to 38. And what lessons are here for us? We're not going to read it. Uh, we've already did the, did the lesson. So can anyone uh, summarize for me what happened there uh, to uh, parallel with, with Nehemiah 8? Sure. You have an Ethiopian. The Ethiopian is from where? Ethiopian is from Africa. Right? He's a treasurer in the, in, in the Ethiopian government. He's passing through. He opens the book of Isaiah. Which language is Isaiah written in? It's Hebrew. Right? He's asking, and so Philip, the disciple, he walks up and says, that the Ethiopian says, I can't understand this. I can't understand this because it doesn't speak Hebrew. 
So he takes Philip, who was a disciple, who spoke Hebrew, to now tell the Ethiopian what exactly what he's reading. He explains it to him. And then what's the Ethiopian asking? The Ethiopian says, please go baptize me, because I understand now the word of God. He felt Philip baptizes him, and then what happens? The Ethiopian never sees Philip again. He walks away. That's it. So again, it's the same scenario that we faced before. The Ethiopian did not speak Hebrew. Okay, he needed somebody who spoke Hebrew to explain to him exactly the, the prophet, what the prophet Isaiah was saying. Even in the history, too, like, leading up to our history, uh, they used to change the Bible to the point that they can only person they could read it. Or at least because the people didn't know the language. And so they used to change the Bibles to the court. And they were, the priests were the only ones to read, but then later on, you see that it, it's been interpreted into different languages, like King James. And, uh, mm -hmm. but, but even with our, with, 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 with our history, uh, our African American history, and how, uh, it was taught to keep them in submission and all of that. The, 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 you know, the people that don't believe in God, they don't realize that God is a spirit. And so with him being a spirit, you can, you can bring all of this oppression, you can bring all of this stuff against me, uh, but when, when, when God has your heart, he's going to bring you into the knowledge of all truth. It's not going to be what somebody wants to spoon feed for you and what they think that they want you to do to keep you in subjection. It's, it's not going to be any of that. Yeah, let us get it done. John 5, 39? Um, 39 Okay, John 5, 39? I was going to say, you study the scriptures because you think, and then you will find to my life. And then the very scriptures speak about me, yet you are not willing to come to me. And also, I don't have that seven on my favorite. So, yeah, you want me to What, a 40? Uh -huh. Okay, you, you read uh, 539 and 40? Okay. It says, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Yeah. So, see, we, we study the scriptures, and it's supposed to lead us to Christ, but. We find people when they talk about, you know, about the scriptures, it's, it's the, for their gain or whatever, but it's not talking about, you know, Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, we study you because you think that in these scriptures that you will be saved, but you can't study them to be saved. Mm -hmm. But the way that, that people interpret it, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's not. Study him because you are saved, and you want you want more and more. You want more and more of God, and you want more and more of God's truth. Uh, did anyone have any other comments to, to uh, share for Tuesday? Yeah, it's uh, very interesting how uh, Dr. Reed uh, was pointing out about uh, being, um, the language being uh, both uh, Hebrew and charismatic, mm -hmm. and at the same time, I see part of that situation also being uh, uh, the results of the disobedient uh, two at the same time. And so it's like, it's very interesting that if you have a disobedient spirit and you go to try and interpret God's word through your own understanding, it seems like you just gonna fall short. No doubt about that without question because again, you have to get back to the uh, unity uh, with God. And then like she was just reading here, you can search the scriptures, but the scriptures didn't send you to me. Mm -hmm. which was Jesus, mm -hmm. so that he is uh, the source of eternal life. So it's just very interesting, the consequences of your situation, because again, I heard you say also that it is because of your choice, your action, mm -hmm. on whether it can take you closer to God, or it can, take, or it can uh, make you go further away from God. And you know, it, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's, the word is life. And so, so, so with life, once you receive life after you've been dead, first of all, you don't want to be dead again. You don't want to come, come close to death again. So you want to learn more and more and more and more. And it just opened up your understanding that you want to know God and you want to do as much as you can to know God.
must know the word of God for themselves, and that we must not blindly accept anyone else's word on the biblical truth, regardless of their authority. At the same time, who hasn't been blessed by having someone help explain the meaning of text? We need each one of us to know what we believe for ourselves. But this doesn't mean that at times we can't be enlightened by the teachings of others. And when it says enlightened by the teachings of others, it doesn't mean that we accept every comment and opinion that goes off on these tangents and wrong interpretations. But individually, we ought to, like I said, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. When he said, what did he say? When he comes, the Spirit of the truth, he the knowledge of all our lives. He will comfort you and give you peace. And so we're coming to Winston, and Wednesday is the people's response. Uh, and the scripture text was uh, Nehemiah 8, 9, and 12. And it asks, why did the leaders tell the people not to mourn nor weep? And that, 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 was, that, was, that was awesome to me. And the reason it was awesome was because when you come into the knowledge of the truth, just, just think of it. Here, uh, in praise and worship, and something happens, and God show you you, and then after he show you you, you're going to mourn and you're going to cry. Uh, but then he, 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 you, you've confessed your sins. Uh, uh, you, 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 you've cleansed the crying, just, just, just cleanses you from all of that. And then, then he say, uh, now you've dealt with all of that. You've done all of that. So right now, you, you came to truth. And so with truth, you should be rejoicing. And so... Uh, so, so that's what that text is saying. Why did the leaders tell the people not to mourn nor weep? And what did, yeah, and, and what did anybody else get out of that? Well, what I clearly got out of this was this. Um, this, is not, this, this. This is not the first time that the Jews have been in a situation like this. But this clearly is the work of the Holy Spirit. God said the Jewish people were stiff necked they were difficult people. He knew that. And on countless times, they proved that. So here now, the Holy Spirit is now softening the heart of this nation. of 50,000 people, the Holy Spirit is now softening up your heart. And when you have the Holy Spirit working in you, the Holy Spirit is designed to do what? It convicts you of sin. It makes you aware of the sin that you have committed. And here now, they come face to face with all the sin, all the unfaithfulness that they have been, they have committed. They were carried off to Babylon for 70 years. They thought that they were in Babylon by themselves, but were they there by themselves? Of course not. God was there with them. He brings them back, okay, and now he wants to give them a new start. Well, he knows that their heart is not ready for a new start. So just reading the words to them again, it's going to fail. So here we see the work of the Holy Spirit softening up their heart and preparing them to, to, to accept what God has, has, has given them, the, the, the law of Moses. And when they do that, then we see this reaction. This is the reaction of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now they're ready to do something. Now they're ready. Well, why weren't you prepared before? Maybe the Holy Spirit wasn't working like it's working right now. So we see a totally different response to this group of people. And the reason it is is because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and and no different from today. We're we're uh, we're we're stiff necked people. We're hard headed, and, and and the change only comes when God makes the change. We can't make the change of ourselves, in ourselves, and by ourselves. We need the Spirit of Truth to come in to actually uh, start change, uh, to let us see ourselves, and and let us move in to the truth. We can't do that by ourselves. That, that's like somebody saying they gonna go to church when they get right. How can you get right to come to church? Yeah. So at the bottom it says, what should it, uh, what should it tell us about just how bad sin is that it put Jesus on the cross as the only way to solve the problem of sin and to give us hope? Again, that said that we couldn't do it. So with us not being able to do it, the only, the only hope that we had was Jesus. If, 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 can you imagine if Jesus didn't come, we would be lost for eternity. And that's not even something to think about, is it? That is nothing to think about. But before you, before you, before you, before you go away from this, this is a very, very important point to raise in this, this question. And the gracious sister, too, you both want to raise 
again, we're reading from the law of Moses. We're reading, we're reading from the covenant that God gave to Moses. Well, there are some things that that covenant did not cover. And the one thing that it did cover is it not provide for salvation. There's only one pathway to salvation, and that's Christ on the cross. So here, this is basically the forerunner to Jesus Christ. But there are several things that the Mosaic Covenant doesn't cover. It doesn't provide for salvation. It doesn't provide for sanctification. And it doesn't provide for justification. So Christ comes, gives us a better covenant. Okay. But here, the question is, what should this tell us about how bad sin is in that it put Jesus on the cross? Christ was the only way for us to resolve this sin issue. And it supplies to us what the covenant that God gave to Moses did not. is you working out, out, out your salvation and it can only be done uh, through the blood of Jesus and that makes it very personal. Uh, we come to Thursday, the joy of the Lord that Sister Julia started talking about. Uh, and and uh, in the, the scripture text was Nehemiah 13 to 18 and um, uh, it asked what happened here and what does it tell us about the people and their leaders at this time. And Nehemiah uh, 8, 13 to 18, <coughs> Again, so great. And then it goes to the feast. The feast of tabernacle. The tabernacle priest. Eight thirteen, thirteen to eighteen. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was the feast. That was the feast of tabernacle. No, mm -hmm. with, with time. Mm -hmm. We're going to summarize it. Uh, that was the uh, the feast of the tabernacle, and 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 so so to to summarize the feast of the tabernacle, uh, the chief of the fathers of all the people uh, read in the book of the law and restored the feast of the tabernacle, uh, and and they 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 made the booths, they dwelled in booths uh, when they found out that that's how it initially started, and they, they it's it's like they were so. They were so open to receive that anything they heard, they didn't reject or deny anything. Anything they heard, they was more than open and willing to go and do that. Uh, and, and, and that's the difference between uh, them in the past and them here at this point. But just think about being at this point. Uh, and, and remember, uh, 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 a whole generation had, had been killed out. And just, just, just the, can you imagine I think it would be a little bit of fear mixed with reverence, mixed with love, mixed with bringing you to the place of total obedience because you didn't see what have happened to the people before you. You don't want that same, that same demise, right? But at the same time, you're not, you're not scared. You're just open. I mean, for all of that to happen, to have you to be open to receive. And so, 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 uh, uh, go ahead, Sister Julie. You know, even in, um, I'm not going back to Tuesday, but Tuesday's lesson bring out God's forgiveness. That, that's why they wanted to be chosen on the one. They were grateful in for what? You have to give me? Why don't you want me to? Oh, really? That's peace. That's peace. And I still can come to you. I still can. Okay. But doesn't it feel good to know that? Mm -hmm. They need his 
and they when they accepted it, look at that the next day they came to see what else they had to do for God. So they weren't that negative experience that God was put in us, you know, afraid of God. They came out of love. The Lord said, I'm showing you love. Sister Monica back there. Now, you know you always have something to say. We got to hear something from you today. You know that, right? I'm just taking it in right now. <laughs> what you say, you're taking it all in? Yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just something just to think about where they were and, 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 and to bring it uh, up to uh, present day uh, of, of, of the things that, that have brought you to where you are uh, to know, uh, as, as, as Tim was talking earlier, about uh, disobedience. Uh, and, to, and to bring you into that place of obedience that what's the difference now? What's making it work now that it haven't worked all the time before now? Yeah. The heart is ready to receive. Because you have confession, things like that's not going on, you know, that's what's taking place, but I see my family, that's why the name of Slurman, Lord, was ready to stay with her. And Tim, Tim looks like he wants to say something, what Tim? Oh, Lauren. No. <laughs> expectation halfway through this quarter mm -hmm. is that we would not have to come back and revisit this same situation with the Jews again mm -hmm. in the same set of circumstances. Do we have to come back and revisit this same set of circumstances? Mm -hmm. Of well, course we do. Well, God we, said, God we, said who we, we are. You know we have to we, go we, over it and over it and will. over it and over it. And what you got then, uh, a light bulb go off and you get something else now. So, 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 if it was just given to us and we received it all, we would be God. And I know I'm not God. Last week, last week, my mom and dad, we were here, we were talking about the Bible. And the Bible just seems to be a cycle. <laughs> Human beings are on this merry go round, you know what I mean? And how intense their heart is. And as soon as Nehemiah steps away from that, he goes away and he comes back. That's another lesson, another day. Uh, and, but, and, 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 but, but you just said uh, the Bible being a cycle. Anybody, anybody in the room uh, reading the Bible today, if you read the Bible today, do you get the same meanings that you got five years ago? I, I, I mean, we should be growing towards spiritual maturity. And that's the purpose of the Bible. The Bible is the only book you can pick up and you can read today and you read that same scripture next week and you don't get the same revelation. And so, so, so for me, uh, I'm not smart. You know it's not me. So it has to be something greater than me. It has to be something stronger than me. And the Holy Spirit meets each and every last one of us right where we are, give us what we're ready to receive, because a lot of times, if we got it all, it would blow our minds, literally. Uh, and so, so, so we just, 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 to, just to receive what God has for you and know that that's for you, that's just a, that, 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 that gives me a, 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 a feeling to just want to be there. Want to see what God got for me today. Uh, what you're showing me today. What I'm getting out of this today. And, and, and not just what I'm getting out of this today, but when I come, I hope I'm coming with a spirit that I'm not just coming to receive. I'm coming to share. I'm coming to listen. I'm coming to hear. So, 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 so we all don't walk out the same way that we came in. And, and this says at the bottom of the joy of the Lord, and we know that the joy of the Lord is, uh, is our strength. At the bottom, it says, think about what we have been given in Jesus, who was symbolized in all of ancient er uh, Israel's feet. Sorry, guys, I was at the clock. How can we learn to rejoice in the Lord even during difficult and painful trials? And why, especially during these times, is it crucial for us to do so? And so that comes to my homework that I told you guys that I helped you guys. Uh, the homework is overcoming, being an overcomer. Uh, and I only made 10 copies, and I, I, I don't know. Some people will have to share. I'm sorry. Isn't there a movie? <laughs> 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 
No, ma'am. No, this is this is just a lesson. Just the, checking. The lesson text that that we went over today. Uh, this week in class. Do I get one, Rita? Oh, uh, see. Uh, yeah, we. Oh, okay. oh, no, 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 no. No, we're not going over it today, guys. I'm just like I said. That's homework. Take, yeah, yeah. Take that home and and go through it when you get a chance to go through. Okay. Yeah, but but see see and and I didn't pass it out in the beginning because that's what you do when somebody gives you something you want to browse it and see what it is. So that's why I gave it to you guys at the end of the class. But uh, yeah, and 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 there's some good stuff in there, and it brings us right to where we are with Thursday's lesson, the joy of the Lord. Uh, what you go through. Uh, that, that brings you right to where you are right now, all your trials, your tests, your tribulations, and those are some scripture reading that, that, that just, just to look through those scriptures, and there's some good stuff in there. So, uh, and, and, and the bottom of the commentary for Thursday is, uh, again, it said, think about what we have been given, uh, given in Jesus, who was symbolized in all of ancient Israel's feasts. How can we learn to rejoice in the Lord even during difficult and painful trials. Why, especially during these times, is it crucial for us to do so? And you know, sometimes, sometimes you can go through, and you're really going through, and uh, when you're at your, at your lowest, people leave you. And you know, nobody want to be associated with somebody going through and somebody uh, uh, dealing with some stuff. Uh, they say they do, but they really don't. Uh, but 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 in those moments, I think those are moments that God created uh, in each and every last one of us. Those are the moments where we can find Him, that we can get solace in Him. And so 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 at those times, in those moments, uh, we 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 run from them, and we really don't don't want to go through them. But we really should be running to them because that's 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 when we can really find God. I mean, we're distracted with work. We distracted with stuff. We're distracted with people, and we have to have that time that we have have our God time. The Holy Spirit woke me up 30 minutes early this morning, and the Spirit woke me up, and it's just a peace. And that peace that woke me up just said, "Praise me." I got up, I got on my knees, and I was just giving God praise, and I gave God a prayer. And 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 when the Spirit can just come and visit you and at any time, you know, there used to be a point that, that the spirit would try to come to me at three o'clock in the morning and I get back in the bed. But 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 you get in tune to that spirit and you know when he's coming and he just wants to spend some time with you. And that's an awesome t thing to be in that space, to be uh, mindful, to hear the spirit of God when the spirit of God is coming. Uh, and, and, and a lot of times it's coming because some stuff is coming and preparing you for some stuff. Uh, but 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 just to have that have that have that time that God want to come to you and He just want to commune with you and He just want to spend some time with you. I think that's a that's an awesome thing to have, and nobody can get in between that. And uh, that that is that. So we're on Friday, and Friday uh, said that now they must manifest faith in His promises. God had accepted their repentance. They were now to rejoice in the assurance of sins forgiven and their restoration to divine favor. Every true turning to the Lord brings abiding joy into the life. And when a sinner yields to the influence of the Holy Spirit, he sees his own guilt and defilement in contrast with the holiness of the great searcher of hearts. He sees himself condemned as a transgressor, but he is not because of this to give way to despair, for his pardon has already been secured. He may rejoice in the sense of sins forgiven and the love of a pardoning heavenly father. It is God. Uh, God's glory to encircle sinful, repentant human beings in the arms of his love, to bind up their wounds, to cleanse them from sin, and to clothe them with the garments of salvation. And you know, I look at, I look at Israel, the Bible for me, I can, I can read it all day long. The Bible is the, is the, is the best soap opera there it is because you can, you can find all kind of stuff in the Bible. Uh, is, 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 is there anything about the lesson that, uh, some key points that wasn't covered that someone would like to share with the class? Dr. Reed? <laughs> uh, no, I, mean, I, mean, I, I, I think I, I covered it before, but for me, I mean, to me, it was 
just uh, it was just something that was in the uh, in the law of motions and, uh, and what God intended when He gave, uh, when He instructed uh, Mosaic covenant, a covenant like no other covenant, and that it was conditional. Jews did some things, God did some things. They did it. And we see they did. And ultimately, what happened was they got carried off. They come back for a new start. Good new start. We'll see how long this lasts. I just have two For that lesson, the, 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 the key point that I got out of that is that uh, we can't do what God can do, and God won't do what we can do. And so they had to get themselves in a, in a, a, a they had to be holy and come into that place where they could receive God, where they could listen to God, where they could hear God, and to receive him and hear him with gladness. Uh, that's, 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 a, that's an awesome place to be because like today, we have so many distractions. We have distractions with job, with the job. We have so many distractions with things that we're doing. We're just so busy. I, and my question is, what are we doing? Why are we so busy? Why, why are we in so much of a hurry? We're in a hurry to, to do nothing. We're in a hurry to get nothing done. We're in a hurry to go nowhere. But we're just in a hurry. Yeah, always in a hurry. And people out there now running, running lights and bumping you and keep going and just all kind of craziness going. So did anyone else uh, have something that they wanted to share uh, uh, about the lesson? Monica, I got to hear from you today. You know I do. I just, um, I'm sure you guys probably mentioned this before I came, but one of the scripture passages that stood out to me was in Deuteronomy 31, um, 12 and 13, where it was mentioning the different groups of people that were called together to hear the word of God and to be encouraged to obey it. And the group that stood out to me was children, you know, um, because, you know, we can talk amongst ourselves, but what are we passing on? You know, the stories, one thing that I've been trying to do um, in my family is actually get to Sabbath school. I've been in the church for a while, but, you know, we struggle with making it to Sabbath school. And if I'm struggling, my nine-year-old doesn't drive, that means he's not getting it get into Sabbath school. Mm -hmm. So I really impressed it on my heart that, you know, in our families, you know, make sure our children, grandchildren, whatever, are really hearing the word of God. Um, in our family, we have worship at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> and so no matter what's going on, you know, we're having worship, trying to be consistent with that. And so that, that text in Deuteronomy 31 just stood out with me as a mom to just make sure that my children are being taught about God on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and that, 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 that brings out a key point that, that uh, like coming, bringing it up to, uh, to, to today now, uh, so many, so it, I think the children, like, like they, they were ready to receive instructions uh, and our children, we got young men killing each other over nothing. Uh, I think we fail, and when I say we fail, the leaders aren't there. We haven't been teaching them from generation to generation, and it's like they're ready for somebody to show up, but there's nobody to show up. And so with there not being nobody to show up, they're just doing their own thing. I mean, just dying for, for something useless. I, I just lost a nephew two weeks ago. Uh, he was shot. He was shot in the chest. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And and he got shot, and, and it's just useless, but but for us, I think each and every last one of us, we, we need to be mindful of, of what we're not giving and try to contribute to really make a difference. Uh, uh, because if you see something that's really a struggle or a problem with you, God is asking what you're going to do about it. And so we just can't sit on the, on the, on the, on the wayside and, and just complain and, and murmur and don't want to be a choice to, to, to help bring some type of relief or try to bring some type of solution. And I, I think that each and every last one of us need to uh, examine ourselves and see uh, if there's an issue or there's a problem or there's an area, area that there's a problem. Even in church, uh, mainly in, in church, if, uh, if you see a problem in church, don't be calling gossiping with somebody about it. Do something about it. Amen. 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 Am
Amen. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, uh, I'm used to us cutting off at 1045, uh, but I think they push it to 11 o'clock, and then I think they got the clock uh, fast by five minutes. So I think I really got, <laughs> I think I really got eight minutes. Yeah, so, so, minutes. Yeah, five minutes. Oh, 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 I got five minutes. So, so in that five minutes, uh, uh, did anybody have an experience that they had this week that they would like to share? that coincide with, with, with something we can learn from the lesson for this week? Don't be looking at me like that. <laughs> you see me looking at you, Dr. Salton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Salton, uh, don't you want to share something that happened that coincide with the lesson this week? Give me a lead. <laughs> Give me a lead? Give me a lead. No, no I'm messing with you. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I but. Huh? I do have something. You do? Yes, go ahead. Something, something, something. Mm -hmm. Jasmine? When I, when I, when I process experience. Jasmine. It really moved me. Last week, when I spoke at the church here, I, I spoke about a point. I spoke about a strategic And my dad here, he's been with us here for a week, 10 days now. And I'm going to hear you in your brain. I'm speaking of a prayer now. God doesn't answer every prayer all the time right at that time. And we know that people, our forebearers have prayed for us, and now those prayers are now just being answered. So my dad has done a, a research of our family. He's gone back to the archives, and I've gone back, and I've seen my I know my grandfather, I know my great-grandfather now, and I know my great-great-grandfather. Both of those two were slaves. They were, they, were, they were here, they were in the South before 1865. And we know, and when he said that, he shared this with me, this is what came to my mind. I've thought about this ever since day, but I haven't even told him this. No, we, we, know, right. <laughs> we, we know, no, but he has used his brain to go back. And you see how, how active and energetic he is. He used his brain to go back to figure this out. And he bought it to me, and he gave it to me the other night, and I sat down and I looked at it all. But we know that the slaves were good for two things. There you go. Praying right. and singing. We know that. And we know that they prayed most likely so that their kids would not have to go through what they were going through at that time. And look at God. Does he not answer prayer? Amen. We do not have to live now today based on what how they lived back then. Yeah. And we see now how God will just answer prayer, but he's not on our timeline. He'll answer it on his own. Amen. But we see he does answer prayer. And that's the same thing we interface this week with our lesson, lesson six, about how the Jews confess and worship and they pray. And you know, that, that, that brings us to the last point I'm going to make about voting. Uh, there was, there was a, a, uh, a lesson. We have different groups. And, and, and people were talking about, do it make a difference uh, if you vote or you don't vote? And you go back to our forefathers uh, that died uh, for that civil right. And it's, it's, it's a right. But still, with having that right, you can go to different different areas, and they doing stuff by by not 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 uh, using their identification, and still still doing stuff to to change uh, a fair playing field. Uh, and with all of that, we still have to make a difference. I mean, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what somebody is doing. It doesn't matter if it looks like you're defeated. You still have to go and knowing that. God is in control. And so with God being in control, he's going to work it out. So, 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 so the main ones that are always talking about what's going on won't even go to the pole. And I think that's crazy. That's, that's, that's like an oxymoron that you say nothing's going to change, but you're not willing to do something for it to change. I think that's crazy. Yes, isn't it crazy? <laughs> but, but I got uh, two minutes, so let me press out. Father God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for instructing us. We thank you for guiding us and teaching us because it's just by your spirit, by your spirit that you bring us into the knowledge of the truth. Lord, you said that you would not have your people ignorant. And Lord, just let us come in unity. Let us come in oneness. Let us all be on 
on one accord, and Lord, let us not be guilty of failing to assemble ourselves together uh, with like-minded saints. And Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God, and amen. 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 I'm a good listener. I let everybody else teach. <laughs> Thank you. Take your thing with you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sister Rita. Thank you. For leading that lesson. And thank you, everyone, for your contribution. The, the, uh, the past, like, three quarters, I find myself reading a Sabbath school lesson that is so relevant mm -hmm. that when I'm done with it, I still go back to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were in the Holy Spirit. We went to the book of Acts. We went to Revelation. Mm -hmm. And now we're here. And I still keep going back to what we have, we have learned. And then you keep pulling back what we have learned from before. And so this is, this is just fire. This is pure fire. Next week, I know at least one person who has already taken a sneak peek of next week. I'm looking at him, he's looking at me. I know this brother, this, this brother. I'll be talking to him on Sunday and he's telling me something about Thursday lesson of the following week. I'm not going to say his name, Dr. Reed, <laughs> the, the, the third, but that's it, that's it. So next week we're going on to another one, our forgiving God. Okay, uh, maybe you just didn't hear what I just said. <laughs> Am I talking to people who qualify for Romans 3.23? You know what Romans 3.23 says, right? Oh, I'm sick. Let me... <laughs> I, I, I love Sister Marie. She said, no, but give it to me again. <laughs> Romans 3.23, you say, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why you have to repent. all Amen. And just in case you... Oh, we're all sinned. Well, I can repent to God is he's before you, pleading your case. That's right. You Jesus say, is doing you're not that. Among sinners. You don't supposed to be among the sinners to call yourself a sinner. No. This is study. Yeah, he said study. study. So you need you, you, you need you yeah, need you need confess, you need to be here next repent. week. <laughs> you need yeah, to be here next week so we can share that information yeah, that, that you have. Question. Yes. Next week is the sixteenth. That's right. And, and I'm going there. Oh, okay. Amen. Oh, okay. See? Okay. I got people okay. in tune. Okay. So next week the lesson is our forgiving God. Yeah. Yeah. Love this. And then we're not going to be here, if we remember. We're going to be at New Sunny Mount. Baptist Church. That's where we're going to hold the Sabbath services. And we have all the flyers out. We're going to have some posted on the wall. Sister Jerrine has it so detailed. Not only the location, but the driving direction. She has the longitude and the latitude if you need them. I mean, she got it all packed. So we're going to be there because we're going to have Chaplain Dr. Barry Black preaching on that service. And I'm going to start here, and I'm, I'm going to pick it up on the main service. Invite anyone you can. And here's the thing. I don't care about the crowd. That's not me. Because God doesn't count numbers. He makes the, man, the numbers count. But if you have, and you mentioned about this when you're passing your, your, your homework, when you have something good, you share with someone else. It's just as simple as that. So we are planning to have an awesome worship service next week. Tell it to someone else. Mr. and Mrs. Reed told it to mom and dad, and they drove from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Amen. <laughs> to be here with us. Now, come on, you can surely tell somebody in St. Louis, Missouri. Amen? Amen. 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 So, Amen. next Amen. week we have our forgiving God, and we just want to see God for who He is. He is a good God, and He is a forgiving God. Amen? Amen. So, thank you all. Uh, Sabbath school is going to start at 9.45. At 9.45 we'll be there. It will start. That's what the flyers say. And we'll finish a little before 11 o'clock because the main service will start right at 11 o'clock. 
by 9.45 a.m. We'll be there ready to, to start a Sabbath school just like we do here. We're going to have a prayer, we're going to have a, a devotional, and then we're going to get into the lesson. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Preparation, participation, prayer, patience. Why do I say patience? Because the church is full of people. It would, be, it, it would have been okay if the church didn't have any people. But it's full of people, just like your fun reunion is full of people. And you have to show up and be nice to folks. Amen? So be patient with people. And then give people a chance to share what God has given. If you're an introvert, I say, open up and share. If you're an extrovert and you like to monopolize the time, give other people a chance to share as well. Amen. But all in all, we're excited. We're excited about this worship service today. And I'm going to say it again, we got some heat in the house. Thank you, Dr. Soda, for all that you did to make sure that happened this way. Amen. We're going to make a transition here in a few minutes and we're going to set our divine worship. Amen.